Nigerian Northern Governors Forum frowns against calls for regime change, barely three weeks after the NSAT protest ends. And in River State, Governor Yesom Wike denies ordering the army to kill Igbos. This is as six soldiers and four policemen were reportedly killed in violent hashtag NSAS agitation by members of Indigenous Peoples of Biafra, IPOP. This is Plus Politics. I am Kayode Ladenge. Welcome, this is Plus Politics. In the wake of the widespread hashtag NSAS protests, individuals and groups have taken to social media to make heated demands for President Muhammadu Buhari's resignation. These actions the Northern governors are not smiling at. The Northern leaders, after their meeting held in Kaduna State with traditional rulers on Monday, described such calls as an agenda for regime change while condemning the protest. Now, that's not all. The governors are also calling for control and regulation of social media. But the Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, Serap, says it will pick up a legal fight against the National Assembly and Nigerian Northern Governors Forum if it goes ahead to pass the social media bill. Joining us virtually to discuss this, we have uh, Hamed Buhari, a politician. Good evening, Hamed Buhari. Uh. Yeah, good to have you. I'm sure the, 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 the audio will be sorted out in a GP. Then we also have joining us the executive director of Serap. That's the group who promised or who vowed to take a legal file. Uh, Ade Tokumbo Mumuni, who will be joining us any moment soon. Okay, let me start with you, uh, Buhari. Um, this call comes at a time where people would say that, uh, um, was it necessary? Should it be a dissenting voice at this time when everybody believes that uh, the protest makes a lot of sense, but they are condemning the protest? I, 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 what's your take about uh, these uh, dissenting opinions? Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. I wish I heard you. I have people from your studio still calling my, my phone, and I'm unable to keep concentration. If you could tell them to please allow me to have this conversation with you. Okay, it's, it's actually not from us. I guess it's one of the callers, because there's nothing like that now. And uh, can you hear us now? I'm getting calls from Plus TV again. Wow. Okay. You can uh, carry on, sir, with your question again, please. Okay, I just want to get your take about the governors, uh, the Nigerian Northern Governors Forum, talking about the issue that uh, they are completely against this regime change and the protest. Um, I, I think I've spoken on a few platforms and I've tried to air my views with regards to what I think is the situation with the country. And there is no doubt from my analysis and um, observations, we do have a serious problem. And the problem started with the fact that we were talking about a, a reformation of the Nigerian police slash SARS. And a lot of people called for, for the end of SARS. And as the protests uh, gained momentum, a few more people wanted to ask for more things that really bothered them. And in all fairness, those things were things that all of us believe would profit the generality of the Nigerian people, if not in the immediate, but in the long term. So, oh, oh yes, we were calling for, um, for an end to SARS. We're calling for a reformation of the Nigerian police. Um, some of the demands which were, were stacked five for five, um, uh, you know, featured things like um, pay rise for the Nigerian police, um, a proper welfare for the police for things like their children, things like um, life insurances and stuff like that. We also talked about uh, proper punishment for people who have, um, you know, derailed from the from the core of their service to the Nigerian people 
and uh, have been found allegedly found wanting when it comes to how they dehumanize uh, fellow Nigerians. We also had on that list of five for five the call for an immediate compensation and an apology to the families of those people that have been killed in the way of uh, extrajudicial killings or police brutality, as the case may be, on different fronts. So in all honesty, I don't think that the people who were protesting at Lagos, Port Harcourt, and a few other places like the ones that started in Kanu and were halted, the ones in Kaduna but couldn't sustain, and the ones in Abuja as well. You see, the, the intention was, was genuine and germane and, 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 and laudable as well. Because if you look at it from all angles, everybody was excited about the fact that Nigerians could come together for a purpose. And, and, and you know, I do not know what information is being sent to the people at the very top, but the clear truth of the matter was that the Nigerian people, the Nigerian people believe that the, the police force needs to, be, needs to be revamped. Even if it was working right, at different times, these kind of institutions will be, be looked at and we will try to see how they can work better. But you see, with regards to the SARS situation, you may have not seen as many protests in the North like you did see in the South. And the real reason for this is because when you, when you look at the videos coming out from the, from the South on police brutality, alleged police brutality, alleged police killings and stuff like that, you, you, would believe, you agree with me that we do not have similar uh, concerns like that when it comes to the SARS in the northern part of the country. As a matter of fact, when you talk about SARS in the north, what people really talk about the first is here we are, we have issues like kidnapping, we have issues like uh, Boko Haram, we have issues like um, um, banditry, and the first responders when we call for help are people of the men and women of the SARS. So people around here kind of see them as uh, as the, their, their heroes, to be honest with you. So when, when people started calling for a reciprocated kind of protest from the North, the people in the North could not connect. But coming, coming back to your question, of course, which has to do with the, uh, the Northern uh, governors and their concern and their, and their concern that the, this whole plot is to oust President Muhammad Buhari, I think it is untrue. I think we should stick to the matter on ground. I think we should be honest with ourselves. I think we should not uh, politicize these things. And, and, you know, I keep wondering, maybe I'm not smart enough, but I keep wondering, why do we even have Northern Governors Forum, Southern Governors Forum, Eastern Governors Forum? What is all of this about? We are talking about one country. The same people that talk about Northern Governors Forum, Southern Governors Forum, are the same people telling us every day that we want to build a one nation, one country. Then why do you have all of this uh, pick awesome. and pockets of... Um, of governors here and governors there as if it is not one country. Ahmed. We should be looking at how governors should make this whole thing in such a way that even if the people in Kanuri are finding it tough with a, with a calamity or whatever kind of challenge they're having, let the governor in Delta State be concerned about it. Let the governor in Sokoto State be concerned about it. If there's something affecting Kwara State, let the governors in Adamawa feel the pain. That is the only way we can be talking of building one nation. But when we keep hearing that another governor's forum have come together, or, or Hanese is speaking from this, or um, Afeni Ferry is speaking on the other side, what stops all of us from coming together and see how we can progress as a people? The moment we start breaking these things down, we're trying to create that division, that concern, that fear that is always propelled by our, you know, selfish interests. Okay. And I, and I think we must... Ahmed, uh, you, you've said a lot and you've actually covered like four of my questions. That's fine. But let's look at um, some of the worries you've raised because that's, those are some of the things that uh, you saw a lot of people jumping into the media space. To You have the Pandev, you have the Afeni Ferry, you have different groups saying, why are the Northerners feeling superior? But can you be real to us? What is actually the voice we are hearing? Is it just the political class that is speaking? Because that seems to be what it's looking like. And why should the political class uh, turn this whole conversation into politics? That's two in one. What exactly are the people on the street saying concerning the protest? Like I said in my opening statement, uh, maybe it was too long and you must have lost um, 
No, I, I got it. Trail, I got it that you, you, I apo you I apologize. I apologize for speaking too much sometimes. You, you didn't. Um, but, but, but in all honesty, I told you that the issue of SARS, you know, is not is not the same across board. I agree. Uh, the assignment of the people that have been appointed to maintain law and order and stability, in my opinion, have decided to sometimes step out of their boundaries to do things that, you know, make them feel comfortable and not necessarily making the Nigerian people feel comfortable. If you come to the North and you talk about SAS, you are talking about who are those people that respond to kidnapped, kidnap, kidnap cases. You're talking about those people who respond to attacks from Boko Haram. We're talking about those people who would fight bandits into the bush and try to capture some of them. If you've been looking at the news, especially if you go to the Nigerian police website, you will see week after week, men with ammunition, with hundreds and thousands of bullets being arrested by the Nigerian police under the operations of the SAS. Okay. So clearly, people in the North will tell you, these SAS people that you are complaining about are the same people that have been okay, helpful worry, to worry. us amidst all of our challenges, okay. especially I, I, as it concerns our security. Ahmed, I got you clearly. I don't want you to repeat what you said. I, I'm just saying, now there is a call for, there is a suspicion for regime change. And that's the, what I'm asking about what are people saying on the street. But trust me, I will allow you to respond to that. I just got somebody online to join us in the conversation. That's uh, the executive director of Serap, Ademumuni Tokumba. Yes, I understand he's on transit, so that's why we are talking to him via our phone. So, uh, Ademumuni, and Serap has come out again to say that um, there's going to be a legal action against the northern governors, as in the northern leaders, and that of the National Assembly, if they look at the issue of social media regulation. That's the statement out there. But before then, let me bring you to the other part of the communique, if I might get your thoughts on that. And that's the fact that the northern leaders are also saying there was a motive for a regime change. Did you also share that sentiment, how the protest turned out to be? And, and let, let me tell you, we have had election in 2015. We have had another election in 2019. I am a lawyer. I'm an advocate of rule of law. I believe in democracy. Once you have had the opportunity of having an election, I don't think there can be any democratic thing for asking for a regime change. Apart from you to wait for the freedom of the so that you have the right to vote and be able to vote those who desire to be voted out, out of government. So my, my idea is not about having a regime change other than by a democratic means. So that is my perspective in respect of that. I don't I don't I don't think there can be a regime in a country that has consumed in a country that has elected representatives in a country that has elected governors in a in a country that has just elected a president for a second time, and you now start saying you want a regime change. I don't think that is acceptable in any democracy all over the world. Okay. Yes. Okay. I'll come back to um, the press release you you released some hours ago. But let me go back to Buari. So I'm saying this time around that what is the people on what are the people on the street in the north saying? about this suspicion that this protest turned out to be a kind of um, 
surreptitious agenda to get the president out of power? You know, um, Kaide, it, it's, it's just the way we are as a people divided on every front, um, ethnicity, religion, political, political affiliations, even social status sometimes. And the truth of the matter is that as much as, as unfortunate as this might sound, it is the truth. People would always want to key in to create a different coloration to what it, what about, what it, what it is that is being talked about. Um, I've not seen anybody on the streets of um, the northern part of this country talking about any ploy or any plot to oust President Muhammad Buhari. Evidently, President Muhammad Buhari was um, was um, elected into power in into office last year. Um, he won the majority of the votes, and and as such, he's the president. Uh, before he can be taken out of office, it has to be done through a democratic process. I think. Um, what is happening here is uh, a, a misplaced uh, information that has been sent through to the Nigerian governors or some of the Nigerian people. And that is maybe things that they've been hearing from small quarters of people saying that Buhari must go, Buhari must go. But people will always say these things. When Jonathan was there, people say Jonathan must go. When Obasanjo was there, people say Obasanjo must go. It's always going to be the situation. Uh, Everybody is not going to like you. Uh, but the only, the only thing I would advise anybody to do at a time like this is to, you know, listen to the people. I mean, the voice of the people is, like they say, the voice of God. Um, I, I do expect that um, the people at the helm of affairs would take this as an opportunity for them to, to say, oh, probably we're not doing something right here or there. And the Nigerian people are trying to call our attention. If the people that we have appointed to help us see these things have failed to see these things, okay. maybe we should actually uh, be... be um, Maybe we should actually listen to the Nigerian people that are calling us, especially the young people of Nigeria that are calling us to say, you know what, do not, do not, um, do, 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 the, do the needful, restructure the Nigerian police, do the right thing for them, pay them better salaries. But it's not just about salaries, it's about the welfare, really, because we've seen some people, um, even like people in the judiciary, people in the National Assembly, this is an area of our governance that has to do with uh, legalities, and we've seen them very clearly. Uh, on uh, at every point in time, you know, never never finding it enough, no matter how uh, how um, handsomely they're being paid. So what mm. I think we must do as a people right now is to you know you know try and sound uh, some words of reason to the people at the helm of affairs to let them know that nobody is against okay. President Muhammad Buhari. Okay. I, I for one would be very very excited if President Muhammad Buhari finishes as the best president ever. I will be also excited if the next president that comes in 2023 finishes as the best president ever. Exactly. For me, it's about getting something better and better and, and, better, better. and better. That is all I care about right now. Okay, good. Uh, um, just uh, time is really fast, but no thanks to the network hitches. But let's quickly look at the second leg of this discussion, and that has to do with the social media that the Northern leaders endorse. So, Mumuni, what exactly is your fear, and why are you already you know, raising the red flag? In, in, in of what? Yes, about the regulation of the social media. What my the point that I always say is that any responsible government should not bother itself with what happens in social media. Nigerians and Nigeria. I faced him with a lot of existential matters, matters of survival, matters that go towards their existence. So what I want any responsible government to do in Nigeria is to create the avenue for economic and social justice for Nigeria. That is all uh, that, that is what I see all this protest about. Once there is economic justice, once there is social justice, all this all this protest will, 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 will pass out. The government has the responsibility to provide for the welfare and security 
of its citizens. So a government that doesn't not able to do that effectively, to me, is a bank of Agoba. Okay. That is what I think that you have thought. So, you cannot tell that you have to Okay, I think about, in essence, uh, if you don't have all those things, do not worry about social media. Social media should continue. I get your point. Uh, let me quickly bring in uh, Ahmed here. Uh, I know you, you're closer to this generation. We cannot deny the fact that the protest was largely successful via social media. And hence, government is thinking that probably some of the things that happened wouldn't have happened if not for the influence of the social media. What is the sense in that uh, issues raised by these northern leaders, vis-a-vis -vis the Minister of Information, who had also been calling for that? Yes. Uh, you know, when you talk about social media, you're talking about my generation. You're talking about how we communicate. We're talking about where we source for information, how we read, um, how we understand what is going on around us, how we research, how we've been able to use social media to sort of upgrade our thought processes to understand what is happening, not just within our country, but around our country. Anybody who thinks social media is bad should have a rethink, a very, very good rethink. I mean, the people who, who are trying to call for the end to social media are the same people who use social media to run their campaigns that got them into office today. I'm a young person, when I, when I run my campaign, uh, from 2016 up to about 2019, in the last election, I used social media. I didn't have the money to go to to the media. newspapers to do, pay for adverts. I didn't have the money to do um, TV interviews as much as people would have wanted to see me. But social media was that one place that we all could relate with ourselves and actually spread our messages. So I, I do believe that for everything that is good, it has got its own bad sides as well. And which is why I think if you talk about fake news, yes, it exists on social media. If you talk about hate speeches, they do exist on social media. If you talk about misleading information, they do exist on social media. So what I think we should be doing as a people, what I think the governor should be doing, what I think the Minister of Information should be doing, should, it should be a very clear message backed by law as to what you could do or say that could lead or be misleading to what the people are supposed to know. So for example, if somebody say, um, if you, if you, I'm, I'm sharing something on social media and I'm saying for every fool and man that you see, kill him because they're the ones killing us. I think that is evil message. I think that kind of person can be traced and should be prosecuted. If you are saying that every evil person you see in such so place, arrest him, for what reasons? Those kind of insightful messages can actually lead to destruction. For example, when the protests started in Lagos, as much as they were peaceful, before the thugs invaded those protests, we did hear somebody from, a, an, from an extraction of the part, one part of the country actually saying that people should actually go out there and destroy property belonging to a people from a part of the, of the country. Now, this kind of messages, I believe, should be truncated because in, in, the, in the truth of the matter, they are capable of ridiculing us as a people. However, you cannot say social media is bad in its entirety because it is what most of us have been using okay. to, to be part of the system that we have found ourselves. So Very... anybody who is scared that social media is the problem is not being honest with themselves. And do not forget, they, don't, they didn't just start calling for the scrapping of social media just recently. They've been talking about it many years coming down the line. Very but true. I keep reminding them that this same social media that you talk about can be used for good. So if the people that are sending out bad messages are 1,000, make yourselves 10,000 so that you can got all of that and so the good messages will be out there. The one thing that this administration must understand is that they are not communicating effectively to a generation of people that are about 80, 70 to 80% under the age of 45. And these people have gotten to be, they have got to communicate to them effectively. Okay. And the one place you can communicate Amen. to them is uh, I, I wish we could continue. You've raised quite a lot of issues, and I'm afraid my time is up for this segment. But let me quickly just get 30 seconds of Mumuni's take on that important issue that uh, Hamed has raised, and that has to do with how do we curb 
those inciting statements, those hate speeches that come through this medium? I, I agree that um, when we use social media, we have to be ready. We have to be patriotic. But I have not said that in being patriotic, you must not speak to power. That is the that is the responsibility when you speak to the power. So if social media is being used to disseminate information, to call government to attention about certain needs of the people of Nigeria. I believe that that is the fear and responsibility of social media. For example, this government, this, this government campaign on social media okay. to win the vote of Nigeria. So why, why are they now saying they want to ban the social media? And that will not... Maybe just to quickly add, that they said they don't want to shut down social media, they only want to regulate it. That it needs to be regulated. Let, let them regulate it responsibly. Beautiful. Not dictatorially, not physically. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Ade Tokumba Mumuni, the Executive Director of Serap. Your point is very important. I will not forget it. Let them regulate it responsibly, not dictatorially, not <laughs> uh, 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 as a way of fascism. Thank you very much. I will not forget that. Thank you, Ahmed Buhari. Sorry for that uh, slow start, but you were able to make up for some of the points we needed to hear from you. Thank you both, gentlemen. Keep doing, keep doing your thing, man. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Have a good day. Yeah, we'll take a short break. And when we come back, River State is in the news again. We'll be back after this short break.